again, ladies and gentlemen, to Body Slam the Competition. Chris and Mike are off today. I'm Ray. And we have another exciting edition of BTC Presents. And today we have with us multi-champion in the independent circus, Ring of Honor superstar, Shane Taylor. Shane, how you doing today? Just the best show of all time. I'm sorry, say that again. You actually cut out for a second there. Oh, I said uh, thank you for having me. And uh, even though those guys are out, we're going to make this the best show of all time. Most definitely. So, <laughs> first I want to say, you guys just got done. And I know that, you know, last weekend was a big weekend all over, all over the world for wrestling. It was WrestleMania mm-hmm. weekend. I know Ring of Honor had some stuff down there. How was your experience down around there? Uh, WrestleMania weekend was great. Uh, of course, it was Super Card of Honor for Ring of Honor. Uh, our biggest show in company history uh, had about thirty-five to 4,000 fans at the Lakeland Center. Uh, or 35, you know, 100 to 4,000, excuse me. Um, I mean, the place was packed. The energy was incredible. The fans were insane from opening bell to the end of the night. Um so many big matches, so many great matches, so many uh, guys there putting it all on the line uh, to be the best that they can be and turn some heads, and it was incredible. I was about to say 35,000. What were you guys doing, holding Ring of Honors uh, WrestleMania <laughs> down there? <laughs> yeah, you know. Hey, you know what? It's about time you guys get that one, you know. That's been around mm-hmm. a long time. Oh, yeah. So uh, you've, been in the year, you've been in the business for about 10 to 12 years. Am I correct? Yep, going going on ten. Yep, yep, going on ten. And uh, you've been all over the United States, up and down the Midwest. You've been down in GHC. You guys, you've been down in Wild uh, Wildcat Sports, RWA, WWWA, VIP. Um, you know, and your mainstay now, Ring of Honor. Um, how did that all, you know, roundabout pan out? You know, how you started, well, where you started, and migrated to Ring of Honor. Uh, I started, uh, in Cleveland, Ohio, you know, I was born on the east side, uh, very violent part of the city, very, uh, very destructive part of the city. Uh, also, uh, on that side of the city was the guy by by the name of Raymond Rowe, you know, uh, one half of War Machine, former Ring of Honor tag champion, um, worldwide. Long rival, long stay rivalry going with him. (laughs) Long stay rivalry. Um, but I started, you know, um, around 2007 after finishing up, you know, my collegiate athletic career and graduating from college, uh, Slippery Rock University. I, um, I, I made the choice to live my dream and follow my passion, which is professional wrestling. Um, right. so I did, I, I did my research and, uh, found out, you know, who the reputable guys were in my city and talked to uh, Ray Rowe and another guy by the name of J-Rock, uh, Big Daddy of the Destruction, gave it up one time for J-Rock Daddy. Um, and uh, they talked to me, and we were at a show in Painesville, Ohio. It was New Era Pro Wrestling. And um, they talked to me and made sure that I was serious about wanting to do this and told me that, you know, I had to have, you know, open eyes and ears and a closed mouth and listen to what they were going to tell me, and that's what I did. Um, And fast forward to this point, uh, in about the end of 2013, I I had done, just like you said, I had gone everywhere. I had done everything. I had reached a plateau in my career, and I felt that there was a point um, that I wasn't really progressing. You know, I was sort of maintaining and in this business, if you're not progressing, you're getting passed by somebody. Um, right. So, I've heard that from a lot of people. You've got to put your all into it. It's one of them, go big or go home. If you're not dead center out, acquiring that as your dream, then you might as well not even do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because the second you take your foot off the gas, you're getting passed by hundreds, if not thousands of people. Um, this is the only right. sport, you know, to my knowledge, I mean, other than a few select others that you are literally competing with everyone from around the world for a select few spots, for a select few jobs. Right. Uh, 
and you have to be on your A game at all times. There's no room for error. Um, so uh, end of 2013, you know, Ray Rowe calls me and says he, he had already been down in Texas for about four years now, and he had been telling me for years to come down, and I was like, yeah, you know, I was just doing my thing up here, um, up 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 north in Cleveland, and um, finally one, once I realized that he was right, uh, which most of the time he is, but don't tell him I said that. Um, he <laughs> Ray, is <laughs> Ray. If you're listening, you just got told you're right. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure he'll listen to this and like and and record it and plaster it on his wall so he can be like, "Hey, remember that time you said I was right?" I'm like, no, nah, I don't. Um, well. So. But the funny thing is, you guys have a history beyond that. If I'm not mistaken, you you and I were speaking before about how you mm-hmm. guys actually wrestle each other in the amateur circuit as well. Oh yeah, uh, both of us are uh, collegiate wrestlers. Both of us, you know, went 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 to college for amateur wrestling, um, and we actually wrestled each other in high school. He he wrestled for St. Ignatius. I wrestled for Normandy High School. Um, and, and we met each other at a tournament um, where our two schools crossed. And so, yeah, I mean, it's funny how life works like that. But, yeah, I wrestled him mm-hmm, when I was either a sophomore or a junior and he was a senior. Um, and, yeah, and, you know, he he won because I was sick that day. But it is what it is. And, uh well, we will, don't worry. We won't tell him that either. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. We, it's we all right. You, that you've between. proven that. You've proven that in the ring. So it's, it's all good. Yeah. He knows where he's yeah, exactly. at. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and, so now uh, you guys are down in Texas. Yeah. So so now he's he's convinced me to come to Texas. I moved down here, end of 2013. Uh, was working with the National Wrestling Alliance, doing some shows for them. Uh, met a bunch of guys down here, like a uh, former world champion, you know, Jack Dane, uh, and you know Tim Storm and, and Andy Dalton, and of course, you know, uh, my PBK brother, you know, Keith Lee, Pretty Boy Kill, Pretty Boy Killers. For those that don't know, uh, currently you are uh, being to it. <laughs> tag team champion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hey, well, that's so, not the uh, only thing you've done down there. You're, you're, if I'm not mistaken, your debut. In um, VIP was against Charlie Haas, wasn't it? Uh, in v- VIP, VIP, VIP. Uh, I not necessarily the date, the debut, but very early on, yes. Uh, because at at the time when I came to VIP, I want to say I, I was on my either first or second run as a Wildcat Sports Champion. Um, okay. In uh, from in New Orleans, um, you know, shout out to Luke Hawks and. Everybody over there at Wildcat Sports, they do amazing things. Um, one of the best promotions and best training schools in the country. Um, yeah, I, I I think I was on my second run as champion there, and I uh, one of the very first few one of the very first shows that I did was against uh, Charlie Haas too, and uh, another incredible incredible talent that I got to work with. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and again uh, another one with an amateur background. Oh yeah, hold on, sorry, my daughter's in the back. <laughs> uh, That's quite all right. Yeah, the uh, yeah. hold on. Yeah, um, sorry about that. Um, the uh, hey man, everybody's got a family. It's yeah. all good, man. Family first. Oh yeah, man. My my daughter's my heart, man. Uh, she's watching American Tale. Ro- Right now, like the first one from '86, and losing her mind. Uh, <laughs> hey, we grew up. We grew, we grew up on that. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I'm 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 an old school parent, man. Like I'm only 31, but I'm like I'm gonna raise her the way I was raised, and you know, she'll turn out all right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, Definitely. That's all anybody can hope for. You know, is that their child comes up, you know, well rounded and, and, and well respectful and well respected. You know, and and with the love Absolutely. for life. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, um, so, 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 so yes, uh, working with Charlie Haas was phenomenal. Um, and then again, you know, just being down here in Texas and making my way around the scene down, down here, because there's a lot of great talent in Texas and Texas is such a big state and such a big area. 
that a lot of it kind of gets lost unto itself. Um, but, you know, I, I really got the chance to break out uh, with the Wildcat Sports title runs, and that led me directly into um, my very first uh, tryout and matches with Ring of Honor when they came to San Antonio. I want to I, I want to say uh, about two years ago, two and a half years ago, uh, when they came to uh, San Antonio and Austin. Now I might be wrong. Um, if I am, correct me. Was would that happen to be right around the time of uh, Future of Honor Friday, back against Brutal Bob and uh, I'm drawing a blank on his name. Uh, uh, you you and you uh, and Keith had Tim, a tag Tim match Hughes. against him. Tim Hughes. Yes, Tim Hughes. Uh, would that be that, right around that the time, actually, or was that later down the line? No, that that was far later down the line. Uh, yeah, okay. the the stuff, the stuff with San Antonio, my very first stuff, like the Future of Honor stuff, didn't happen for maybe a year and a half after that. Um, okay. Yeah, that like, but but that was when Keith and I were picking up steam, and we had already had a few matches uh, together in Ring of Honor. Um, well, now, how did you guys? How did you guys come together in the first place, Keith and you, um, as a tag team, as the uh, as the Pretty Boy Killers? Well, there and the I'll very tell you what, you guys, concept. you guys are definitely a force to be reckoned with with size, strength, and, and I'm gonna put this out there. You're you're what six foot one, probably three fifty. Mhm. You are Absolutely. a very agile man. I I don't think I've ever seen a man come off the top rope doing a splash like you have. I mean, it's insane. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I mean, and and the crazy thing about that is Keith Lee is as athletic as I am. Keith Lee is a super athlete. You know, the dude is. 330 pounds plus doing topes and, you know, moon and moon salts and all kind of stuff like that. And just crazy, crazy athletic. Um, so you put the two of us together with him being more of the, uh, high, high flyer. If you can believe that about a 300 plus pound guy, uh, and me being the right. more, uh, brawler striker, you know, uh, o- the more of the grounded pound that bad due to the team. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, we we first got together. It was originally put to get put together as something for the National Wrestling Alliance. I I believe Killer Elite Squad was the NWA World Tag Team Champions at the time. They were over in Japan and in NOAA doing their thing, and they really didn't have any competition left. You know, from what it seemed like, you know, and I know Bruce Starp and some of the guys. We're looking for teams to go over there and challenge them or to, something like that. So I, I looked at Keith and I was like, and we're both trying to, and we're both great single stars, but we were trying to, you know, really find a niche. And I, I was like, hey, man, I say we get together and go, you know, go fight them. <laughs> he was like, yeah, I right. like the idea, you know. And uh, so I I proposed it to Bruce, Um and uh, not, nothing really happened with it at, at, at that point. Uh, but the first time we teamed up was in a National Wrestling Alliance ring against Ray Rowe and Jax Dane. Um, and it was at that point during that match that we figured out we had a lot of chemistry uh, and that if we started, you know, honing our skills and honing th- that cohesiveness that we could do some great things as a tag team. Right. And, and it definitely shows, you know, I mean, and, and, and I, I hate to re- keep reverting back to, you know, War Machine and Ray Rowe and Hanson, but that seems to be one of the most iconic feuds that you guys have going on. Well, you specifically in terms of, you know, who you've gone against, and it's Ray, and, and that falls into, you know, the chemistry that you guys have had. Um, I watched mm-hmm. a match on television. It was War Machine versus you guys, and mm-hmm. it was just mayhem everywhere. I mean, destruction all around the ring. I mean, tables being destroyed, chairs coming out. But, you know, you put any guy that's not comfortable, and in my opinion, um, comfortable with working with somebody, somebody's going to get hurt, you know. But you guys seem to have such chemistry that, you know, you can tell that, you know, they were taking the bumps, you were taking the bumps. They were portraying, you know, how hurt they, they supposedly were. I mean, granted, yes, some people say it's fake, but I know firsthand some of that shit hurts like hell. And uh, <laughs> all of it, but it, it ended up being a phenomenal match, <laughs> you know. And it's all like you said; it's all about chemistry. 
Oh, for sure. And that and that and that and that goes back to, you know, when you look at some of the great rivalries of our sport, you know, whether you're talking Austin Rock or whether you're talking Brett and Sean or whether you're talking, you know, Von, Von Erickson the and Hardy Freebird, Boys you know, and the, 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 the right, Hardy Freebird Boys and, and education and all and, and all and all those guys, you know, it, it's growing up the way we did. Uh, Ray and I have very very sim- similar mindsets about everything in life, right? Um, whether it comes to fighting, whether it comes to our families, whether it comes to how we see professional wrestling and what, and what we see and the things that we like to watch. Um, so when you get us both in there, we're almost mirror images of each other as far as a mindset goes with, with, with different styles to add different flavors, but um, you're getting a very, very similar guy in a very, very similar mindset. And that is, right. I'm not going to walk around. I'm not going to walk around you. I'm not going to go over you. I'm not going to go under you. I'm just going to go right through you. Um, so right. when you put us in the ring together, that's what you get from both sides. And you add in Hanson, you add in Keith Lee, who also have very similar mindsets of the, doing the exact same thing, but they have the ability to, to fly, they have the the ability to defy gravity. You know, Hanson is one of the most agile big men I, I've ever been in the ring with, and like we've already said, Keith Lee is an absolute freak. Um, so you add those dynamics, and it's you know you get a recipe for a great great rivalry. On top of the fact that Ray and I can go out there and kill each other in any city, any country on on any continent. And you're and you're gonna get a hell of a fight, uh, and and right. the matches and, that and, you and see, you guys and they're all to, right. You guys and you guys aren't opposed to um, saying, "Hey, I want to try this because of the comfortability and the chemistry you guys have together." It's been mm-hmm. less. You know what? The hell with it. Let's go for it. You know what I mean? Oh, for, oh, for sure. And that's and that's a very Cleveland mindset too, especially in some of our matches. Like we we grew up fighting on in Cleveland, like on the street, like, you know what I mean? For, for a long time, uh, you know, and, and this will be news to my family, but like for a long time, I, how I made a lot of my money, you know, was fighting, you know, not like, you know, right. UFC, but just fighting like, and, um, you're doing what you gotta I, do I, to survive I, more or less. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's not something that I look back on with pride or, you know, anything like that. It's just, it's simply what I had to do. You know, and, and that, right, but if you look mindset, back at it this way, you wouldn't you wouldn't be who you were today if that aspect of your life didn't happen. Oh, true. true you know, because very, it was a stepping stool. Very true. And, and I don't. And, and please don't get me wrong. And I don't want anybody else to get the wrong I, idea. Not nothing I've ever done in my life do I regret. And, and I know some people are like, oh, well, that's weird. I'm like, no, it's not. Because everything that you've done up, up until now has made you the person who you are. I I, right. I love the man that I am. I love the father that I am. I love er- everything about my life. Uh, so I don't regret anything because, like you said, it all led me to this. Um, so right. so I cherish everything. But you can look back on, on points in your life and go, well, that wasn't one of my finest moments. You know what I mean? <laughs> but exactly. Still, but what he's saying, kid, is it. if you can avoid fighting, avoid it. <laughs> Please do so. Please do so. I'm not advocating fighting or advocating violence. I, I am simply just saying what I was, the position that I was in, and what my, what what I had to do. Uh, but by no means right. uh, should that be your option. That should be a last resort, if if anything. Um, so right. Uh, well, yeah. You, uh, I mean, you so, so those are the type of matches that you get. Mm-hmm. Right. Sorry about that. You were saying. No, no, those I, are the matches saying, you get. Yeah, when you get Ray and I together, and that's what makes our rivalry so great, is because it's student versus teacher, but it's also friend versus friend. It's brother versus brother, and it's competitor versus competitor at the end of the day. And when you both have two guys who have that alpha alpha male mindset and want to be the only one, you know, that's those those are the type of fights that you're going to get. Right. Now, we mentioned, um, you know, and by the way, I can definitely see at some point, because we know a lot of times tag teams don't last forever. 
you know, and I can mm-hmm. see with the chemistry you guys got somewhere down the line, whether it's ROH, whether you guys end up in New Japan, whether hell, whether you guys end up in WWE, which it seems that everybody's main goal is to hit WWE at some point in their mm-hmm. career. Um, I can see, you know, you guys fighting for singles titles. You know what I mean? And and mm-hmm. speaking of singles titles, well, actually, before I jump into that, we mentioned the Hardy Boys. All right. Now mm-hmm. I know they were I know they were over there with you guys. You know, in ROH for about three weeks or so. Um, were, mm-hmm. were you sad? Like, what was your your impression of? Because I know it was under wraps, highly under wraps, uh, with them mm-hmm. showing up at WrestleMania. Um, I mean, I've seen the interview with them where they went right from the trailer straight to the gorilla. Nobody had a clue that they were there. I mean, nobody. Nice. Um, nice. With the exception of you know the new day introducing them and you know Triple H and so on and so forth. Are you sad? to see, and I probably know the answer to this, that you guys, that you and Keith didn't get the opportunity to go toe-to-toe with the great Hardy Boys? Oh, it's, uh, I mean, yeah, but I mean, like, but this is the thing, man, like, if it had been presented as an option that didn't get to happen, I'd have felt more sad about it. You know what I mean? But there's a lot of great right. tag teams that we ne- that we never got to step in the ring with. So it's a missed opportunity, but not necessarily sad. Um, right. You know, he, Keith is doing his thing with you know with with Evolve and and all and all that. Uh, so so, but we still team you know for VIP in various other places around the country, uh, Wrestle Circus in Austin, for example. But um, you always think about what you'd be able to do with great tag teams. You know, like one of my favorite teams of all time is the Road Warriors. You know, I would I would have loved for Keith and I to be able to get in the ring with them. You, you, uh, so, right. it, so it's one of those things that you're like, ah, that would have been cool, um, but not necessarily sad. Uh, it, 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 right, yeah, that would have been one of those you, know, you could say that. Letting your imagination go, ooh, that would have been cool. That would have been a cool one to check off the list. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that, that definitely would have been super fun uh, and would have been a hell, a hell of a fight. I would have loved to punch Jeff or Matt in the face. <laughs> you know, so, so you know. So cool. Oh, man. But, you know. Well, but, speak, but, speaking we'll of, see. you know, brothers and uh, mm-hmm. singles, um, you actually started a, somewhat of a feud. I don't, I'm not sure the extent of how far it went, but – against Jay Briscoe, you know, for the, the mm-hmm. I believe it was the Ring of Honor Championship. Mm-hmm. Um, that that stemmed from various altercations that we had uh, with the Briscoes, with Keith and I. And um, no titles on the line or anything else like that, but simply okay. where, where I'm from, you know, from from Cleveland, if you want to make a name and you want respect and you want people to know who you are, off the bat, uh, it's a very much, you know, jail and, and hood me- mentality, though, too, that you find the biggest dude, you find the baddest dude on the block, you walk up to him, and you punch him in the mouth. You let everybody know off the I think that's how it works gate. out with everybody, more or less. You know, it's yeah. one of them, when you're yeah. in school, you're getting bullied. You take out the biggest fucking bully there is. And the biggest dude. The biggest nobody dude. And nobody say, hey. mess with you. Exactly. Like, you saw what I just did to him. None of you could do that to him. You don't want to try me. I'm the man now. You know, that's what that right. is. And, and, and for 15 years or so now, that's who Jay Briscoe is. That's, that's, he is the Mike Tyson of Ring of Honor. He is the Hulk Hogan of Ring of Honor. He is the guy, right? And he, he, he comes he from the lineage, too, you know. You know, yeah. You know, it's, it's, I, I get it. But like I said, I didn't come to Ring of Honor to be second place to anybody. I didn't come to Ring of Honor right. to just sit back and be like, oh, it's cool to share a locker room with these guys. It's cool to talk to these guys. It's cool to, you know, to But you're to here for one thing, and thing and that's to make a I'm name, here to be the best. kick ass, and I'm get here to gold. Be the guy. Right. Absolutely. I, I, I've always tell, I, I tell people all, all the time, I'm not here to be just another guy. I'm here to be the guy. Um. Right. And that starts with Jay Briscoe, you know. And like I told him after our match in San Antonio, uh, where they a- ended up giving me a J driller from the middle rope, and you know, and Oof. putting Keith through the table, that this wasn't done, and I'm not done with Jay Briscoe. Um, 
down the line. Not by a long shot. I'm gonna see, not by a long shot. I'm going to see Jay Briscoe again. I don't care if it's at a Wawa down the street. I don't care if it's at the venue. I don't care <laughs> where it is. I, I'm going to break his jaw. You know, this see, isn't now, that's over. funny you say and, Wawa because – in Ohio, that, they don't have them, and I know Ring of Honor is in Philadelphia, mm-hmm. and I'm in South mm-hmm. Jersey myself, near Atlantic City. Mm-hmm. So it's like mm-hmm. you hear, you know, around here, South Jersey, even down into Virginia, eastern Pennsylvania, you hear Wawa. You get people around the country like, what the hell is a Wawa? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and like, and for those of you that don't so know, happy it's to know like that a... you knew what it was. Oh, yeah. It's, it, 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 if you're in Pittsburgh, it's like a sheet. If you're in Ohio, I'm trying to think of what's in Ohio. Um, a- any gas if you're in Utah, would like, like made to fabric. order food. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like I mean, but I don't care yeah, if that if it's awesome. in line at Tony Luke's. You know what I mean? Like if we're getting a cheesesteak <laughs> and I and I see him in line, I'm I, I'm jacking him in the face. You know what I mean? Like it's just Let, it's like one of those. Hold on, hold my cheesesteak for me. I got to handle some business. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> He's like, oh, there he is. Bang. Hold this for me. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's, that's exactly what it is. And, and it, it's not even it's not hatred. It's not anything like that except for the fact that he's the guy, and I need to show him, and I need to show everybody else that he's not the baddest dude in Ring of Honor. Not anymore. And it's not I saying am. you don't have respect for him. It's saying you're going to prove to him that you're bigger and badder than him. I had tremendous respect for Jay Briscoe. The fact that he's on the that the fact that he's the guy and the number one guy on my priority list, that shows the respect that I have for him. If if if, if I didn't respect Jay Briscoe, he wouldn't be on my radar. But the, the simple fact of he is who he is, so that makes it a problem because he's directly in my way. Um, so he's right. directly in my way to the six man championships to any tag team championships, to any world championships, to any television championships. To any gold in he's general. He's in the way. Any gold in general. Exactly. Right. Any, any gold in Ring of Honor, any success in Ring of Honor at some point has to go through the Briscoes. Right. You know? and, and, it takes, so, and it makes me think of your, your promo against Chris Hero. There's going to be a new knockout king, and it's you. But in this oh, term, there there's going to be a new big dog in the yard, and it ain't going to be Jay Briscoe if you have it your way. Not, it's not going to be Jay Briscoe. You know, I I came to Ring to Ring Ring of Honor to be the man, and Mike Tyson once said, "To be the greatest that ever lived, you have to beat everyone living." So Jay Briscoe is, in in my opinion, the first to get knocked out of the box. Right. Well, you know, we, we mentioned the big dogs in the yard, and, and I mentioned wrestling. Now, I, if I didn't get your opinion on this, I'd be a damned fool. Um. And I think you already know where I'm going with this one. Mm-hmm. The Undertaker. Oh, yeah. How do you feel about that? I mean, he, uh, me, myself, I watched it. I couldn't watch. I literally turned my head on that three count because I understand, you know, people hate Roman Reigns. You know, it, it's mm-hmm. one of those things. And mm-hmm. he was picked, handpicked by The Undertaker. Anybody that's followed wrestling, anybody that's in wrestling, mm-hmm. just anybody revolved around wrestling knows that The Undertaker's career was in The Undertaker's hands. If he wanted it, they allowed him to do it. And he picked mm-hmm. Roman Reigns. And, but for it, the man left everything in the ring, broke character, mm-hmm. kissed his wife, and rode off into the sunset. I mean, that was heartbreaking. I felt a part of my childhood die. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I got to get your opinion on that, man. Ooh, ooh. Okay. Um, yeah, the the Undertaker for anybody that knows me has been one of my favorite wrestlers uh, since I started watching wrestling. Uh, I was oh, captivated I think I by the way he did. <laughs> oh, oh man, it's 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 crazy. Like it was so cool to see someone so different and so unique. Uh, and actually, for a long time, I, I couldn't watch uh, WWE. Uh, WWF at the time, uh, my mom was very religious, and she was like, that's the devil, he's evil, you don't need to be watching that. <laughs> so, you know, so I would, like, sneak it when I could if I was at, at a friend's house or something like that. Uh, but, right. Yeah, but, I mean, just to see that man and grow up with that and, and, and see the changes that he's made and, and be able to evolve his character and then bring it back to, you know, to, to make it come full circle and to get to a point where 
he is not only the locker room leader, but he's he's the franchise. You know what I mean? Like your biggest show of the year, the cornerstone every year, and honestly, some of his ma- of his matches that saved the entire pay per view, that saved the entire event. You know, uh, like his matches with Michaels. You know, I remember Sean Sean what? Taker won WrestleMania twenty five. It was a pretty yeah, it, it, it was a pretty lackluster WrestleMania until that match. And then I can that, honestly it, say I don't remember anything off that WrestleMania except for that match. And in my opinion, exactly. And and, and exactly. I know you've worked with like Stevie Ray and Big Down there with Booker T. They've agreed mm-hmm. that is probably the greatest WrestleMania match in history, and it topples Andre Hogan. It topples Bret Shawn, mm-hmm. Savage Steamboat. People have turned around and said in the wrestling world, Michaels and Taker is probably number one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and that, and it's it, it's insane. Like, and and you think about where both those guys were at that point in their, their career, you know, easily on on the downside of it, you know what I mean? But put on the greatest match of all time, um, it's it's insane. Uh, so you know, to see and and, and to experience that whole that whole career, uh, and see the special things that he's been able to do, um, is is inspiring, you know, and when to you be talk a guy, about big agile guys, he was one. Absolutely. That's exactly where I was going to be able to see and, you know, see him do all the things that he can do. And it's, 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 in, it's absolutely incredible, you know, and then you look at, uh, you know, how it ended, you know, and, and to me, the thing I thought just me personally, that after WrestleMania 30 with Brock, I'm like, that should have probably been it. You know what I mean? Right. Like, um, like, bang, it's it's done. That's how that that's how it goes. Well, everybody uh, everybody thought it was done because he left his his gloves yeah. in the ring. You know what I mean? They always say when you're done and you leave, you leave a part of you in the ring. Well, this time he yep. literally left everything. Oh yeah, and that you know, and that's that's the deal with Roman. But and the thing with Roman, man, is people love to hate Roman, just like they love to hate Cena. Uh, and and they're the only two guys that I know right now that have sort of changed the dynamic between what a good and bad guy is because they don't do anything right. that that you look at them and, and say oh he's a jerk or he's you know he's a bad guy. People simply just don't like them because they're not uh, the the hand picked people guys by the people they're right. the company's pick. And then you get guys you know? like CM Punk that were supposed to be a designated heel. You got fans mm-hmm. cheering them left and right. Exactly. You know, there's uh, wrestling is very, very much influenced by the uh, by the internet fan base, uh, and um, and and those are the people that are coming to the shows. And it's funny because right. they're the loudest voices, but people don't understand that they're not the biggest revenue stream. The biggest revenue right. stream. Our families, our moms, dads, kids, that's that's where the money is, right? So while you may hijack the right. show, you know, with all your chants and all that stuff, you're not the one buying, you know, $80 shirts. I, I don't know if that's really the price, but, you know, $80 shirts and $30 foam fingers and programs and all that stuff, you're dropping, you're not dropping 500 bucks at a show. Those families are, you know, those, those right. families are the ones purchasing you know, five, six, seven tickets at a time. Those families are the ones that buy every John Cena shirt, every Roman Reigns shirt, every, every color, every, every, every even every every it, young bu- or every Bullet Club shirt, every every big name, every, every, top every Bullet Club know. shirt. Absolutely, absolutely. That's where their revenue stream is. And if you're talking about guys that make them in upwards of hundreds of millions of dollars every year, you know. Uh, their image in pop culture, their image with charities and all, all, all that stuff, they are not about to mess up that revenue stream because a few people on the Internet don't like them um, or don't like the well, way they're portrayed. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> well, you know, well, speaking of so. Internet, I, I feel a lot of things have gone downhill now You know, with the rise of the Internet. Before, I mean, like mm-hmm. you, like we both said, we I'm 33, you're 31. We grew up, you know, in the new generation. We grew up in the Attitude Era, the start of the ruthless aggression era, and I can the Monday Night Wars, you know, ECW, right. and I can I can name those because at the time when we grew up, 
that's what it was. And now you've got TNA, you've got Ring of Honor, you've got New Japan is hitting new heights. You know, you've got WWE, oh, sure. you've got NXT, you've got them all. You've got CZW. You know, you've got and these are and I'll mention names that are like synonymous in wrestling itself. Um, now you get things like the internet. You know, and a lot of stuff is pre-taped depending on where you're at and who you are. Um, so if like in Ring of Honor, if you know if you're doing a show. And a lot of it's, you know, some can be pre-recorded, you know, for use for a later mm-hmm. date. I could turn around and go, okay, well, Shane Taylor, I see Shane Taylor's facing uh, Frankie Kazarian. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, Shane Taylor gets over on Frankie Kazarian. Well, mm-hmm. I just seen this, ha- I just read this on the internet three weeks before it's being televised. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and now do you feel that the, the use of the internet now ruins a lot of the shock value and the surprise value that we grew up on? Or do you feel it's still there? Yeah. Uh, it, 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 it's still there if done correctly. Uh, the, the problem with it, though, is, is not necessarily the internet itself. It's the people. Because there is no news if you don't have people trying to leak stuff and be the first, the first to be the, you know, to – to break the news, you know what I mean? Like right. we, we live in an era now where it's just put it out first, put it out first, put it out first, not really checking to see if it's accurate, not really seeing to check if it's true, whether it hurts people's re- reputation or, or their business. It's just a need to be first. Um, and oftentimes it's wrong. You know what I mean? Uh, but, exactly. But it's, it, it, it's, it's a case now where <sighs> So much, so much is so readily available uh, that it that it, it it makes it tougher to do surprise things, but it can still be done. Like with like with the Hardys at Mania, there were speculation, right. there were rumors, but no one really knew. You know what I mean? Well, that was like um, AJ Styles at the Royal Rumble last year. Absolutely, for, and absolutely. the Dudley Boys when they reappeared in WWE. And I hate to keep going back to WWE, but it seems like. WWE is being as it's all over national television. I mean, Ring of Honor, it's got its certain time slots. Like out here, there's a channel called Comet, and they get, you know, broadcasted maybe once a week, once every other week, you know, for an hour. You know, so it's mm-hmm. on a busy day, you know, you would have to look on the internet, which that's how I come across a lot of my Ring of Honor stuff is, you know, through the internet because of, you know, the fact that it's not fully televised. Um, oh, yeah. you know, I mean, so but, you but get, with you ROH, said, you know, they, they're owned by Sin Sinclair, so they're they're a national they're, they're national as well. But when you talk about Vince and WWE, that's that's global. It's worldwide. Uh, that's that's you know, they're on every station. You know, four or five times a week. You know what I mean? So plus right. with and plus they got their with own the network. Net, with the network, it, exactly. It's just it, it's just such an exposure, such an overexposure to the product that, that you can't help but use them as an example for a lot of things. Right. Well, that actually reminds me of something, you know, speaking of network. Now I figured I'd ask you because, you know, it's mm-hmm. where you're at right now. Um, mm-hmm. The rumors that have circulated of Vince buying the, the meetings between, you know, WWE and ROH in terms mm-hmm. of whether it's purchasing the library because of so many guys that have been in ROH, you know, Daniel Bryan, CM Punk, Samoa Joe, the list goes on. Sammy Zayn, right. Kevin Steen, Kevin Owens, all yep, yep. transition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Kevin Owens now all transitioning to you know WWE. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about that? And, and being that, successful, like, <laughs> right? How do you how do you yeah. feel about that? Um, with that, and, and do you think that's something that could really possibly happen? That Vince either a buys out Ring of Honor, and if he does. You know, do you think it'll be beneficial for Ring of Honor because then they'll televise it more, whether it's on the network on a weekly basis, or whether it's you know on a on a fixed television station, or do you think that's something that could eventually like be the falter of Ring of Honor? Um, I I don't think it's, it's something that's going to happen. Uh, I know that I know that you know with Sinclair, you know Ring of Honor is very productive as far as ratings and, 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 and revenue goes. So I, I don't think that that's going to be a thing. Um, I'm not a fan of any one entity controlling everything in wrestling. Uh, so I think it's right. beneficial for Ring of Honor to, to maintain on its own and to be on its own. Uh, because when you have more competition and more places for the boys to work, you get better matches, you get 
uh, an abundance of styles, an abundance of viewpoints. And when you look at, you know, when WWE bought WC, you know, when I they bought WC, I was just thinking about that too. W, like the Monday Night Wars were a peak of creativity. They were a peak of matches. They were a peak of entertainment. And then they bought. The that was the highest point wrestling was ever at. I feel. Absolutely. And then they got to be complacent because they were the only they were the only talent around. There's no need to push the envelope. There's no need to be creative when you're the only competition. You know, right? Because you right? know people so are going to watch. Instead of trying to be the best, you're like you're going to watch anyway. So you tend to take your foot off the gas, and that's what happened. So for me, um, it's beneficial for all companies to 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 be around Vince with WWE or New Japan or Ring of Honor or any other company that you want to name. It's mutually, it, it's beneficial for everyone. It's beneficial for the guys. It, it's beneficial for their families. It's beneficial for the fans to have different options. Right. Um, so I don't think that that's something that's going to happen. Um, so, you know, yeah, I, I would much, pre- I would much prefer, you know, for a sport and for the fans' in enjoyment, that Ring of Honor stay, you know, stay where it's at. Ring of Honor, right? Now we, we, we mentioned, um, you know, the different competitions and everything, um, and athletes. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about the women's movement? You know, now, and I know that you know Ring of Honor gets their showcase Women of Honor. Now, mm-hmm. how do you feel about that progressing compared to like back in the early two thousands when we all know what it was? It was all glitz and glam and no in ring action when it came to women. I, I think it's a long time coming. I think it's well deserved for a lot of the female competitors there. Um, I know the WWE just announced uh, that they're going to be having a women's tournament too, like they did with the Cruiserweight Classic. Uh, so I right. I think it's a long time coming. But I, I also think it's something that they need to stick to if that's going to be the revolution because it seems like it's lost some of its steam. Uh, not right. not saying that you know that the women aren't respected, but I mean because they are, and they deserve every opportunity that they've been given. But I but, but I know like for example, uh, I, I want to say it was the SmackDown like six way w- women's championship match was like kicked off the main show and was going to be on the pre show, and then like the fans made a big stink about it and they put it back on the show. You know what I mean like you you have right. to let. And I, I don't even remember seeing. Maybe they they did, um, and then I'm trying I'm trying to think of it right now, but I don't remember seeing the Raw title on on Mania. But it could have been. It was, um, but it was, it was it yeah, was it, 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 was. it was you know it was a fatal four way elimination. But honestly, right, right, I right, 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 right. kind of went right, right. to go make a sandwich during that one because it had gotten but, but like that's, that's the thing. Like you have to, you, yeah, it, it's so hard to push a revolution that people can see you're not fully invested in. It's like, it's like doing, it's like doing something. It's like doing something for the attention. And then once you get the attention, you stop doing it. Um, And I feel like when you had all of those ladies down in in, in NXT, they were doing amazing things and and they brought it up to the main roster and, and they were doing amazing things for a while. And then they kind of like got back in that got back in that old old rhythm and old pattern of doing the same old thing. And my thing is, if you're gonna have a movement like that, you need to be consistent in in showing that, and you need to right. you know to always keep that in mind. Right. Well, we're get we're getting down to the quarter mark quarter mark of the show. Um, speaking of movements. Uh, uh, I want to talk more on, on your career, your your movement in terms of like where you're at and where you're heading. Is there any places that you would like to see yourself maybe eventually step in the ring at or any opponents, whether they're here at ROH, whether they're in New Japan, whether they're in, um, in Evolve or, or wherever, WWE, NXT, over um, the one that Paige's family owns over there in England. I can't remember the name of it. Um, mm-hmm. Is there... Is there any places that you eventually, at some point in your career, want to step foot in? Any any opponents that you would like to, 
maybe step in the ring with and go toe to toe. I mean, you've already said you want to slap the taste out of Briscoe's mouth. I mean, oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. You know, um, is there any direction that you would prefer to see yourself going, or are you just you're, you you feel yourself evolving um, and going at a pretty good pace right now? Um, I I always am a guy that likes to challenge myself and and do great great things. You brought up a point earlier about saying that uh, WWE was where everybody wanted to go at some point. And I didn't, I didn't disagree with you then, but I'm going to disagree with you now Um, because that's not, that's not my goal. Um, My goal, uh, because I'm, I I, am a guy that lives by a motto that was, you know, taught, taught to me by my father, but further further instilled by Ray Rowe. I am loyal to those that are loyal to me. Um, Ring of Honor gave me my That's shot. That's a very good model. Ring, Ring, Ring of Honor gave me my chance. So as far as right. any other co- any other company like that, I am I am a Ring of Honor guy. Uh, I will say that and preach that to anybody. I commend, and it is incredible to see guys like and e- even though I want to punch them in the face guys like Jay Briscoe make their career putting Ring of Honor on on their back and elevating it as far as they possibly can on on, on their shoulders on on their own right. no machine no none just them just their talent their skill their their ability and and elevate it um and to and, and and to be clear, there's nothing wrong with guys going out and making money and, and doing all that stuff and 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 taking any opportunity that they want. I, I'm simply saying that I find it commendable, and there is an admirable quality in wanting to do that. And I see myself right, and more as being or less one it of comes those down guys. You stay loyal to right, and you stay loyal to them. They're going to stay loyal to you, and they're going to look at you and say, you know what? And, and I'll use John Cena as an example because he mm. is, when you say wrestling nowadays, the biggest thing that pops in your head that's an active wrestler yeah. probably is John Cena, regardless of right. where you're at and where you look. Um, mm. A guy like him, he travels six days a week doing promotions, mm. doing uh, appearances, doing this, doing that, stepping in the Absolutely. ring, doing, you know, you're loyal. And that's why he's a 15th or 16 time world heavyweight champion. Okay. Absolutely. You, you stay Absolutely. loyal to your company. You know they're going to look at you and say, you know what, this guy stuck with us through the ups. He stuck with us through the downs. He stuck with us through the rise again. We're going to put him on the spotlight. Whether it's the tag, whether it's the television, whether it's the world championship, we're going to put him mm-hmm. there and we're going to let him run with it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And 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 to me. That's all I've ever wanted in any promotion I've ever wrestled for. You can ask anybody. All I need is one, one shot. You give me that shot, whether I fail or whether I succeed, that is on me. But you give me the opportunity, and you will get the best Shane Taylor that there is. Um, all right there, Eminem. It, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Sorry, I was, but, uh, I was referencing 8 Mile. <laughs> uh, hey, it's all good. It's all good. Um, but, you know, as far as – Again, like it's just ring, ring, ring of honor with the history, with the legacy. You can look at any promotion, even look at WWE and, and their last what ten big stars. Think about all the guys that have broke through. That if they weren't created by the machine themselves, came from a ring of honor. No, you're talking about you look at Cass you look Neal, at example, you're talking yeah. about Punk, you're talking about Rollins, you're talking about Owens, you're talking about Zayn, you're talking about you know what I mean like all. Aries, you know what I mean? All those guys. Ring of Honor guys. And it's sad you because know, so. you see some of these guys that have gone from Ring of Honor and have gone up to, and I'll just say it because it's what everybody thinks, the big stage. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You, you, mm-hmm. you take them, like Sami Zayn, you take them up to the big stage. They have it. They gave him what? An NXT championship, and that was it. Mm-hmm. It's, they're, they're not mm-hmm. using When he was El Generico, that was some of the mm-hmm. best stuff in his career that I have ever seen it. I will stand by that till the day that I die, unless they mm-hmm. do start using him right. Mm-hmm. I mean, and it's tough, man, because you have, you have so many guys there, so many talented guys, and you have, you know, there's, there's, just, there's not a lot of room for everybody to shine, you know what I mean? But, right. um, but I, I also feel like he's one of those guys that connects to the crowd so well that 
he's going to get he's his like reaction. He's going, he's going, he, yeah, he, he's going to have his moments. He's going to be one of the top guys, regardless of what they do. You know, another guy that, that comes him to more mind for like his that. personality. Exactly. Absolutely. Like like Ziggler. Ziggler to me, hands down, has been one of their best per- performers for years. You know what I mean? And like it's it's just. But he he always tends to stay like in this weird, you know, above mid level, but not at, not at, at the top sort of role. And it's it's it's, it's strange to me because the guy's got everything. Um, and in his biggest moment I mean, was so, cashing so in no on Del Rio. Here. And and it's sad. His huh? biggest moment Sorry. was cashing in on Del Rio in, after yes, WrestleMania. That, that was a, that that was a crazy moment. I have I had goosebumps. You know, like watching it, I'm just like, oh wow, like that. The energy from that crowd was incredible. You know, um, All right, but, and, I, and, but, and I've noticed that Ring of Honor gives, you know, people that give to them. You know, they give to the people that give to them. Like, mm-hmm. prime example, Christopher Daniels. And I know that that locker room congratulated that man till forever. You know what I mean? Because oh, yeah. we've oh, all yeah. seen Christopher Daniels' career. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He's had his ups. He's mm-hmm. had his downs. He's one of the best in-ring competitors. But for him to mm-hmm. finally reach that you know, that grass, that gold ring and grab it and, mm. and, and finally get the championship, you know? Mm. And like you said, you stay loyal. They're going to be loyal to you. Oh yeah. And, and, and credit for Daniels is a guy who is, who has everyone's respect all over the world. Anybody that you talk to, I've never heard an ill word about Chris or for Daniels. The man is a consummate professional. Um, he's, he's a leader. He's a general, he's a teacher. Um, and and my my hats off to him, uh, and, and I when I saw him in in, in Lakeland, um, when I had when I had the chance, I went up to him and I just told him congratulations, you know, face to face, because I knew he'd be right. getting thousands of, of, of messages and tweets and all kind of stuff like that. But I wanted to tell him face to face that I was proud of him and congrats and congratulations, excuse me, um, and I wanted him to hear that from me. Um, so yeah, I mean, he's he's he's, he's, he's an incredible guy. I'd love to get on here. Oh, for sure. One day, for sure. You know, and he he's an incredible talent. He's an incredible professional. He's an incredible mind. You know, he has an incredible mind for wrestling. Um, and to to see him finally reach that plateau and to reach that milestone in his career is great for not only him, not only for us as his peers. But for the fans and, and, and for people that have followed his career, uh, it's truly remarkable to see that. You know, but you know, but 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 changing gears, you know, that's that's something that I feel as though I can evolve to and bring to Ring of Honor on my end is be the cornerstone guy, be be like the Adam Coles, be like the Jay Lethals, be like the Jay Briscoes, you know, of right. Ring of Honor, and say put the company on my back. I got it, you know. Um, right. Whether it's whether that, it's the championship or the the world championship, whatever it may be, whatever they give you, you want them to know that I'm your guy. When push yeah, comes I mean, to shove, but the I'm beautiful here. thing about but the beautiful thing about ring about ring about ring of honor is when you look at the lineage of all the titles, there is no mid card title. Like the You're right. the the, the, tag, the tag team championships, that is synonymous with being the best tag team in the world. The television right. championship has been elevated to a point in recent years by guys like Jay Lethal, Bob, Bobby Fish, now Marty Skrull, as being one of the most important champ- championships in the sport, as well as the Ring of Honor World Championship, which is synonymous again with being the best wrestler in this in in this business. Um, so you right. look at any championship in Ring of Honor, and it's a big deal. Um, you know, as, as as well as now with the six man titles, you know, currently held by the Briscoes and Bully Ray. Um, so, which that that was probably a shock in your own when you when Bully Ray showed up. And oh, I bet sure. he's a man that you wouldn't mind stepping toe to toe with because he's a, he's a seasoned veteran. All. He's a guy that knows the ins and outs, and he's a guy you can learn from. Even though you yourself have been there for ten years, this man's been doing it for over twenty years. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So he's. He's been there. He's had that gold, and he can teach. And not to mention, you know, he's got his own wrestling school, for Christ's sakes. You know what I mean? So he knows his shit. I, absolutely. You know, and, 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 you know, and I, for one, would buy a product. ticket to that match. Oh, for sure. 
For sure. I, I'll that's put that out another right guy now. that I would love. Oh, yeah, that I would love to stand across the ring from, look him in the eye and punch him square in the face, you know, and, and, and see what comes back. You know, uh, that's, 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 he's, he's an intense guy. You know, and I, Sin- I would Sinclair love to throw broadcasting, hands Ring of Honor, whoever books these matches, I'm calling it right now. I want Shane Taylor against Bully Ray. I will not take bring, any other. Bring, <laughs> hey, bring it on. Bring it on, man. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, there's only two results. Either I win or I lose, so we'll find out. You know what I mean? Um, and if you lose, you're coming back for more. And if you win, I, you'll take absolutely. everything you've got. Then we just got to <laughs> do it again because we're going to keep doing this until I win, you know? Uh, but 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 to answer your question, you know the the roundabout way, as far as like going anywhere else uh, in in the states, I would love to wrestle for uh, PWG in California. Keith Lee's been there uh, a few times and absolutely killed it. I would love to team with him out there, maybe against the Young Bucks or somebody like 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 that or OI for. 4K, my boys, the the Chris and Sammy Callahan, also from Ohio. Um, or Ohio the shout ultimate out. Gotta goal. love them, man. Oh yeah. Or, or the ultimate goal for me uh, is New Japan. You know, and to 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 go well, you overseas. Actually, you have that. You have that bridge that. work for that though, with the with the connection that Ring of Honor and New Japan has. You have that bridge mm-hmm. work. Already late, Absolutely. you know what I mean. So Absolutely. it's just a matter that, of finding the right the competitor to go against. Absolutely, and that and that's one of the goals uh, that I had w- w- when I started. Uh, you know, uh, one of my my goals was never WWE. It was to make a living doing what I love doing to provide for my family and to wrestle in, in Japan and to wrestle in Ring of Honor. So right now, I've got three of those four marked off. The only other one right. left uh, is to wrestle in Japan. Um, and once and, that's done, then you start a whole new bucket list. <laughs> absolutely, and then and then I write new goals. Uh, but to me, you know, when you you have and, and you and you can see now the the success that War Machine has had there. You know, I I I want to say fairly soon here they're going to be challenging for the IWGP tag titles, and there's a very and we good know chance that, that, they walk, that they walk. Absolutely, it, it, you you can. I personally think that they're going to get it done. So to know that not only that I I can compete with, but beat guys at that level. You know what I mean? To see where they're at, to go. Okay, that's possible. Okay, right. that I can do. You know. So to see that on the horizon and to see that that's a, a viable option uh, o- only motivates me more. Uh, you know, so I would love to be, you know, in a New Japan ring. I would love to wrestle for uh, for for PWG in, in California, uh, too. Uh, there are a few two. places. I actually have two that you should check out. There's one in uh, mm-hmm. Florida. It's called Ignite Wrestling. Um, mm-hmm. I can actually send you the info on the the owner of it. I have her on my Facebook. And um, mm-hmm. Real Pro Wrestling. Um, there's a guy named Zach mm-hmm. Monstar down there. He's uh, he mm-hmm. actually just wrestled Sammy Callahan this week. Um, I can send you his info as well. But uh, we're coming down on good. the uh, the sixty minute mark. Um, I just want to say, you know, Shane, I had a blast today, and I would love for you to come back on, in the future. You know what I mean? Oh, for I, sure. I, it was it Absolutely. was fun. It was like for a guy that I just met. You know, it sounds like you know. I'm sure the listeners will agree. Like we're old friends, just shooting the shit. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. And. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, absolutely. It, it was great having you, man. And um, uh, our listeners, you know, follow us on YouTube um, at BodySlamTheCompetition.com. Um, you can follow us on Twitter at BodySlamTheComp. And uh, follow us on Facebook. Uh, Shane, is there anything else you'd like to say, my friend? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, also, you know, check me out uh, Twitter, Instagram, at Shane216Taylor. Uh, pro wrestling tees.com slash Shane Taylor, bottom line merch.com slash Shane Taylor. Pick up some uh, Shane Taylor merchandise and t shirts. Uh, great designs there. Um, and again, check me out whether it's Wild, Wildcat Sports or with Ring of Honor uh, or, anywhere else, or anywhere else that I am. Uh, come, come find me and come say what's up. Awesome, man. 
Well, we look forward to having you again. And um, you, sir, I hear your, your your daughter back there getting rambunctious. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, she, she, you have yourself a good day, day, man. And uh, <laughs> you have yourself a good day, man. And um, good luck, my friend. All right. Sounds good. And to all the listeners out there, uh, this is Ring of Honor star uh, Shane Taylor, the teeth smash and jaw cracking kid from Cleveland, Ohio, and you are listening to Body Slam the Competition. All right. Thanks, man. Absolutely. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Bye.